My name is Jacob. Um, I'm one of the members of the Electric Skateboard community on Endless Fear and on um, Electric Skateboard Builders. Um, I um, am doing a video today to um, show an in-depth, um, long video for setting up and programming the VESC. Now, the VESC is an excellent product developed by Benjamin Vetter in Sweden. Um, he's a great guy and has provided this open source for everyone, which means that so many people can benefit from this product and not just um, people with um, a great knowledge. And I myself have tried to make it a lot easier for people to access and use the VESC um, through my um, BLDC tool that Benjamin Vetter um, wrote. Um, and me deploying it to Windows and OS 10 for a lot more people to use it. Now you can, you've probably brought your VESC from inertia boards or Ollie boards or maybe secondhand through somebody else or somebody else who's done a, a small order. But um, all of the steps are exactly the same. Um, some of these companies provide um, service, some don't, some um, people pretty much have sold you a VESC um, second hand and not given you much information about it at all. But I'm here to say that there's a lot of resources on the internet that anyone can um, get a hold of just through searching, Google searching VESC. Now Benjamin Vetter has his website, it's vetter.se. Um, now you can go on there and he's got the He's got a couple of um, walkthroughs and tutorials. He's got videos on his um, Facebook page, I mean, on his YouTube page, sorry. Um, but then the forum, there's a lot of other members that have posted videos. If you look on YouTube, you can find them. Um, since I've had my website up um, to download BLDC tool, I've had a lot more people contacting me for support. I'm doing this video to help them. And the people who get the VESC from a company like Ollie Boards or um, Inertion and they're not sure how to use it or what to do. Um, they One of the biggest questions that I get is what firmware version do I use and what um, settings do I need to change for my motor. So I'm going to start off just with one thing and that's if you've purchased the VESC, now this one is just a PCB, but if you've purchased the VESC um, from online, written on the VESC about here, it'll say VESC 4.7 or 4.10, 4.11, 4.12, depending how long ago and who you purchased it from. Um, if I go in closer, you're not really able to see it, but you can nearly make out the VESC 4.10 on there. The reason for me showing you that is it's important to upload the correct firmware. Now, that's the most important thing when you get started, to know your hardware. The second most important thing is that you have your um, setup correctly on the bench. Um, everyone probably has their battery set up because they're using it for an application. If it's a LiPo battery, I really would not recommend um, programming um, the VESC using that, um, although you can. Um, I would use a power supply of some sort and if you are using it, I would recommend putting a fuse. Some people have used a light bulb set up um, things like that to make sure that if there's any sparks or anything that um, you don't hurt yourself is the big thing. Um, I really think that replacing a $100 piece of hardware or $150 piece of hardware is no problem. Um, I would rather people be doing that, but if somebody hurts themselves, I really um, wouldn't like that. Um, if we swap the view over, to my other webcam, you can see I've got a lot of crowded space here. Um, 
right here I've got the VESC. This is a VESC 4.7. Um, it's not currently in operation, but I'm going to use it as a demonstration today. Um, the wires that I've got here are the three phase wires. Now, it doesn't matter what order you put them in at first. You can do the detection in any order. Once you know the direction of your motor spinning, then you can swap just two of them around to change the direction. Um, the second piece, and it's depending on your VESC version, you might have three pins just coming out of the VESC right here. They're your servo pins. Um, on this particular one, we have a servo cable. Um, this goes into your receiver, into the trigger direct, um, trigger input. If you're using the inertion one, it's the same. The inertion remote, sorry, it's the same. If you're using uh, uh, FlySky or a G2B, um, it's all the same input right here, um, and it's, it basically works exactly the same as your normal. VESC input. If you're using a Nyko Karma, you use this port right here. Um, and on the 4.7, it's the two outside pins on the left and two outside pins on the right. Um, on a 4.10, basically, um, I'm sorry, on the Nyko Karma, it's two outside pins on. Um, this one it would be two outside pins on the right for me um, and no, on the right and then the um, two outside pins minus the first one which is a 5 volt on the other side so you'd want to be on the 3 and the um, ground plane you don't want to run 5 volt on the Nyko Karma if you're using a nunchuck um, that's the modified nunchuck with the um, custom PCB then you'd set use the same port um, but the wiring is a little bit different this is the wiring for the Nyko Karma for the um, 4.10 VESC so as you can see you've got your 3 volt which is your VCC and then you've got your ground and then you've got your data and data and you, basically it's the same that's your 5 volt pin right there this one here isn't there on the 4.7 so you just basically ignore it um, the other um, things that you can do and it's probably not happening at the moment but um, I've got at the moment plugged in a um, Bluetooth chip. Um, this is a HM-10 um, which is uh, basically a Texas Instruments um, CC um, 4.1 oh sorry 5 something 4.1 um, and that that can be used that's a Bluetooth low energy chip you can also use a Bluetooth um, 2.0 chip as well um, it's usually a piece to be on the top screen, but that's a HC-5 or HD-6. I'm going to start off, I'm going to turn this VESC on. Because we've plugged in our motor, we've plugged in our um, servo, um, our, our receiver, or any other method of control that you've decided to use. And I'm going to turn it on, and you'll see my Bluetooth modules flashing. The VESC thrash, th flashes three times red, and then there'll be a green light, which you can't currently see. Now, I'm going to open up this BLDC tool, which is BLDC tool, which is a beta version of BLDC tool. This one here has your standard serial port, and then you do do UDP connection, which you would never probably use and now it'll have a Bluetooth low energy connection. You can open it up and it will automatically start searching for a Bluetooth low energy device. And we're just going to wait a couple of seconds and it comes up low energy device found. It comes up with my UE Boom speaker, my Apple TV and this HM soft which is the Bluetooth low energy chip that I'm using. At the moment I only currently support the 
HM10. This won't actually be released for a couple of versions of BLDC tool because we're getting rid of bugs. But I can click connect. It's connecting to service. And there's no firmware read response um, because I don't have the right settings. So I'm going to guys can't see it anymore but let's move this over I'm going to plug the VESC in via USB and then I'm going to hit refresh VESC serial port is going to automatically detect the VESC is there whether it's on Windows or OS 10 OS 10 it will say VESC on Windows it will just say COM port but it will change, it will be the COM port that the VESC is connected to. Hit connect I am still connected to the Bluetooth low energy device so now I should be able to click connect and I'm connected. First thing that we do in BLDC tool is read configuration. This will give us all the configurations that are default from a firmware update. If you're receiving them from anyone um, like Oliboards, that's what's going to happen. For inertion, he'll preset settings for you um, for his motors. If you click read default, it will give you the default settings. Then we've got the application tab. Always read both of them the first thing that you do. Now the thing that's not working with Bluetooth Low Energy is my board rate. So I just need to go 9, 600 and write configuration. And then I can disconnect my VESC and then go back to Bluetooth and connect that again. Connecting to service, we've connected and then again I can read configuration but I've already done that so you're not going to be able to see that we're going to go into BLDC tool and we're going to again connect now the big question is firmware for lots of people we have found out that this is a 4.7 so we're going to go choose and it gives us that warning. Uploading firmware for the uh, wrong hardware version will damage the VESC for sure. For sure as in it will happen. Make sure that you choose the correct hardware version. Okay. Now, if you downloaded it from my website, OS 10, you would have been given a folder that you can put into your hard drive and it will automatically direct to it. If it was Windows, it would have been installed into your program files and again choosing this will automatically direct to it but I've got different firmware that I'm going to put on here I'm going to go through my directories and I'm going to go firmware and 4.7 if you have 4.8 use 4.8 if you use, have 4.10, 11 or 12 use this folder double click now there's lots of different options here. You don't need any of them. The one that you want is VESC default, unless you know what you're doing. This one will give you a server output rather than a server input, so you could do steering um, for an RC car application. These two will do lights for you um, if you have a WS2811 LED driver. This one has potential for encoding for FOC and these two are resistor and capacitor changes because you want the parameters to be read right. I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to go upload. We're erasing and it's uploading. If there is a fault it'll say timeout. What can happen is the firmware doesn't actually get read all the way up. What's happening is uploading the firmware, it's then comparing the two firmwares together, making sure that it's going to work correctly, and then it's going to write it. So if it does get stuck here, don't freak out, you haven't bricked your uh, VESC, but 
make sure that you're using the right version. It'll tell you the supported version of BLDC tool, so 2.16, and it will tell you your current version. I'm going to go back to motor configuration and now I can reconnect because we did the firmware update it reset and I can go read configuration read configuration okay we're in the UART which is still good for motor detection um, if you're in PPM then you need to make sure that it's disabled if you're in nunchuck the same thing it needs to be disabled We're going to go to motor configuration and BLDC. Now I'm going to press start detection and we're going to get an error. Nothing happens, nothing happens. My VESC is flashing a red light three times in sequence. And then if we wait long enough, it's going to come up red here saying bad detection result received. Detection failed. What does this mean? Lots of people might not know. So we're going to go to this tab here. It says real time data. We're going to activate sampling just down this bottom part here. We've got all the data that's running. So how many volts I'm running at the moment. Um, how many amp currents, degrees for the, like the temperature for the um, MOSFETs and the RPM and your watts in total. There's a lot of other things and you can look into that a little bit more but the most important is this fault code. Um, uh, just one other thing, I, I think I mentioned it but try to use a lab power supply or a normal power supply. I use a 12 volt um, or a 25 volt um, power supply that I brought from JCAR Electronics. It's a company in Australia um, and I just cut off the end and soldered on an XT60 plug onto the end of the VESC. But for motor detection, you can damage your um, VESC. We're going to hit start detection again, quickly go back to real time data, and you see there that it came up with a DRV8302 fault. That's the MOSFET driver chip. If you have that fault there, then it means that there's something wrong with the driver and it might need to be replaced. You could have solder bridges um, on your VESC somewhere, whether it's on the MCU or on the um, driver itself. I know that this one's faulty and this is why I wanted to demonstrate it. So people can problem solve this if they do send the email or go on the forum asking, why didn't I have a good detection? detection why did it fail they'll be able to tell us whether that fault code was there um, fault code went away which means that it's not a permanent issue and it looks like it's an issue with just detection um, or driving the motor so that means that um, we're gonna have to look into that um, and if I use my arrow keys you can use your arrow keys to drive the motor and if I press it, it'll flash my VESC three times red because it's giving me a DRV fault. Okay, so I'm going to now turn this VESC off. I'm going to unplug it from the USB port and I'm going to plug in one of my boards and this has a VESC on there that is working so we're going to connect again we're going to wait for it to start up sometimes it can take a little bit for them to start up properly and it would help if I turn on the power on so let's turn the power onto my board. I have a fuse in my board so the detection problem isn't as big a problem but depending how big the fuse is and how you've wired it up because if it's a big chunky fuse it's not going to do anything because it's still going to supply you 60 amps. So we're going to connect and it works straight away. 
it says connected and we're going to read our motor configurations and our application configuration straight away this one we've got no application on there that's just what I had on there before it doesn't matter that'll still work it's actually probably the better one to have for motor detection okay so I'm just going to take the motor off of the table and start detection and I get a value here now this is a hub motor it's got a lot thicker magnets than normal so the back EMF coupling is actually quite high now I know from experience that's not the value that I want so you can change this and if you don't know what you're doing I wouldn't recommend it if you're using a normal outrunner like anything from Hobby King or from Inertion or anyone else I wouldn't be bothering with this and the value that you get should be fine I'm gonna set this to 4 it doesn't go any higher than 4 and I'm going to sorry start detection again the detection worked better and I got a value a lot lower now that's still not low enough for what I know that it is it's just the way that the motor is really BLDC tool does not allow it but I want to put that up to 9 for this hub motor to get this all the way down to 3 300 so if we go read configuration 350 is what I wanted if I click apply then it will apply the settings that my detection had given so I don't have to copy and paste anything on here right here you'll see that I've got min RPM ERPM at 50 and this one my integrated limit min ERPM is 600 if I read conf default settings this one goes up to 150 and this one goes to 1 100 this is recommended for normal outrunner motors for a hub motor because they generally spin slower this is lower because your motor doesn't have a gear ratio um, so you can reduce that and it's going to be better for your motor this one here is halved as well um, and it will make your motor spin a lot better now if you have hole sensors this is where the hole sensor table will go you don't really need to change anything right here is a hybrid mode if you choose hybrid or censored if you go hybrid this will basically say um, at 2000 electrical RPM it will go to sensorless mode which is actually quite efficient for higher speed the detection that we've done here will read all these values if you hit apply it'll tell you here it's failed but I don't have whole sensors so it doesn't matter um, there's an advanced tab I really wouldn't be bothering with it unless you know what you're doing but if you find that the VESC with your motor does a lot of cogging or it will feel like cogging it's not actually cogging it's like a clutch on your car the VESC is finding the sweet spot the biting point for your motor to take off if you don't have that nice takeoff feeling and you have to put a lot of throttle to get your motor to go try increasing this I wouldn't go any higher than point point one really point zero nine is the highest that I would go but generally for a normal motor point zero three would be your best options read configurations I'm using for my hub motors 0 0.09 we're gonna go back to BLDC we've done all of these detections we're ready to go so we're gonna write the configurations to our motors and that's it if you want to use your motor straight out of the box that process there is what you need to do for the motor part this bit here doesn't really matter that much default settings are these 60 amps for a general outrunner motor is fine min battery regen is going to charge your battery in negative so if you're going down a hill and braking and you have a lipo 
generally 20 amps will be okay for short periods of time. If you're not using LiPos and using 18650 cells, I would reduce this down to 12, not 120. Okay. If you, so basically this one here is your motor current max. This is how much current your motor will handle before the vest starts to limit. This here is your regen. Now, motor regen um, is basically this is this one here is a negative value. So um, that's how much negative torque is going to be produced by your motor or is allowed to be produced by your motor. The 60 value here for most applications is okay. Um, if you use a hub motor, generally the motors, the braking is more sudden because there's no gear ratio. So reducing this at, um, will help with your um, braking. But if you want it to be harder, you can set it up to 70 amps. But I wouldn't recommend going any higher than 60 for this application. Um, the motor min regen is particularly for low speed braking, which means if you're going around a thousand RPM down to stop, this is the braking that's going to stop your motors. This next one here is your BAT 3 Max. This is the VESC basically being a BMS for you, saying you have been using 60 amps. I know that your battery capacity isn't handling that much more than that, so we're going to reduce it um, for you so you don't go over 60. If you're running a dual VESC, remember that you have two VESC. So if you set this at 60 and then you're going to go up a massive hill and both motors are drawing 60 amps, your battery, not absolutely, but will then be drawing about 120 um, and that can vary but if that's happening and your motor and your battery is not able to do that you will damage the battery so I for the space cell set this right here at 25 because I have two VESC the base space cell is limited to 50 amp so I'm just going to set it to 25 so that it makes a 50 amp. This one here is your battery min regen. This is braking at high RPM. So definitely shouldn't be 120, but I would say 12 is a good bet because this is also going to recharge your battery. So if you have it set at 12 and you have an 18 um, 650 cell in configuration of three usually it's a 2c charging so if it's a two um, amp hour battery that's four amp hours that you can charge it with if you have that in configuration of um, three then you can really go up to 12 amps now that's a quite generous amount you don't really need it that high but it's a safe amount this one here absolute max is going to give you basically all of these values put together for your um, max amount of amps that can be flowing through your vesc at one time rpm limits here for bldc i wouldn't use them these are hard rpm braking which means that if you hit right here it's a lot of numbers you're never going to go that high but if you hit 10,000 electrical RPM then your motors will stop dead if you will stop dead at that speed it's not going to go any faster than that and if you're accelerating or going down a hill this could actually be quite bad you could float off your board I wouldn't use these um, but 
min RPM is the minimum amount of RPMs that you can use so if you set this then your motor like if you set this to 3000 RPM if you accelerate it'll go 3000 RPM at the beginning um, max RPM this is how fast your motor can spin max RPM at full brake um, will limit the amount that your motor can spin while at full brake and max RPM at full brake in current control mode which um, current control mode is in application tab which we'll go through in a bit. Some of you might say what's the difference between RPM and electrical RPM? Well electrical RPM is basically the RPM of your stator so um, and your motor poles so let's think of it as a circle we've got I'm gonna pop over to, so you can look at me for a bit rather than a blank screen but if you're thinking of a motor that's a circle um, and we've got f say 14 poles all around it 12 stators stator teeth then uh, when you move the motor there's two poles and both of those poles have lined up to a new stator tooth and electrical RPM is how many times that has done um, a rotation now because there's two poles that have um, either side of each other and they've moved or actually it's not even that it's the fact that you have a, um, a south and a north pole um, you half that value so if you have a 14 tooth motor and you uh, want to know your electric or your normal RPM you would take 10,000 RP electrical RPM divided by 7 if you have a 28 pole motor you would divide it by 14 um, and so on and so forth obviously you can do calculations to see if you wanted to go 20 kilometers an hour or 20 miles an hour your gear ratio your wheel size and everything will play a part to actually how fast a speed you will be going and that's why we don't have speed here because everyone's setups are different um, voltage limits this is also the VESC being a BMS for you min input the VESC can't go any lower than 6 the DRV chip um, isn't able to be powered lower than 8 amps sorry I'm sorry 8 volts it, I've tried it at 6 and it does power up but it gives a low voltage error um, and you can actually power it from 3 um, your VESC from 3 or 5 volt if you're using the um, pads on the side but you can't do anything except program um, maximum input voltage is the maximum voltage that you can use on the VESC now normally that's 12 cell so um, 40 uh, sorry 52 volt I think it is um, that you can use on the VESC but if you have a battery and you don't want battery spikes for any reason things do happen and voltages can spike um, because of a short or something I would set this say we have a 10 cell battery that's 42 volt peak on that battery um, I would set it at 45 and then that means if there is a peak then your VESC isn't going to shut off um, but I doubt that that's ever going to happen And then you've got your battery cutoff start. Now, battery cutoff start would be I have a 10 cell battery, um, and I the cells are normally charged at 4.2. Normal charge is 3.7 volt. Now, my VESC, my batteries, I don't want them to really go below three. Oh, sorry, maybe 2.9, something like that. Um, so let's set this at 33 
So 10 times by 3.3 .3 give me 33. And then you've got your battery cutoff end. So you start and end. We can set this 10 times 3 volt because we don't really want it to go under 3. It'll let our batteries last longer. And that gives us 30 volt. Now, with these settings here, what that happens what happens is the vest is going to start limiting speed um, and function amp draw things like that at around 33 volt but at 30 volt it's not going to let you use it anymore um, this soft this period here is a soft cutoff which means you're not going to fly off your board when it hits 30 volt or it's not going to lose power as you're going down the hill and you've been braking and you freak out um, but yeah, this is your temperature. This is basically the same thing. They're soft cutoffs. Um, motor doesn't work at the moment. MOSFETs leave them stock. That's what Benjamin Vetter recommends for the temperature. If you want it to run cooler, you can run it cooler. Don't set it above. I really would not recommend that. Okay, so they're all of the configurations in this tab. The only other thing that you can change is from BLDC to DC, so that's direct current. So you can do that with the VESC. And then fog. Don't run DC through an um, outrunner motor. You can use fog on an outrunner motor. So we're going to now go into our fog tab. We're going to write these configurations. And it's written and now we're in FOC mode. We're going to go into the FOC tab right here. This looks really complicated. Really, if for a general user, I wouldn't touch this box here, and I really wouldn't touch these box here, um, because it's just going to cause you some problems unless it's been recommended to you by Benjamin Vedder or somebody else on the forums. Um, always on this tab, read default settings first because these change and if you uh, have updated your firmware and if you've um, changed something by accident, your motor could not run properly, which we don't want. Um, the fields that we're looking at is these ones right here. So, this is for sensorless motor detection as well as um, sensorless with hole. So, if you want hole, you click this one, sensorless here, and encoder here. I don't think many of you are going to need encoder. There's a video about using encoder on Ved Benjamin Vedder's um, YouTube page. I'm not going to go through it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to read some values. The values that, well, some of the values that we're reading is um, resistance in the motor, and we've got the flux linkage and the. Um, my br brain is not working. Uh, resistance, um, flux linkage, and inductance. Um, that is used by FOC to have the motor work as needed. So basically it's using all of those um, parameters of the motor to determine the position of the motor and then spinning of the motor to make it work a lot more efficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to the motor. And we're going to move this across so everyone can see it. I want to be able to show a little bit more. So, this is the motor. Now I'm going to move over here and I'm going to click this one here and measure resistance. So, R and L. We're going to make a big noise, and then we get values that are 
written here and we're going to go apply and it's saying that one of the values has not been found correctly so we're going to try it again So that's not particularly working at the moment. And I'm not sure why, because I'm not an expert. With FOC, I don't generally use it very often. Um, but there's probably a reason for it. Then we can measure this one here but we need this value to measure this one so I'm not going to tick that click that one but after doing that first detection we click apply it's going to give me an error because I haven't read that value and then we're going to measure the second one and then we can do calculations for the third which is the observer gain which goes well no sorry the flux linkage I think it is um, but it's calculating the the values and then they all get applied when you click apply and they come up here up the top and then they go down here as well I'm sorry that I couldn't get that working um, I wish that I could but once I hit apply here we also have this observer gain which are these values that have just been read um, and then we calculate it and it tells us the observer gain at that point we can hit right and then it should be all good to go and use fog I have an old file here when I did read the configurations for this particular motor and I'm going to write them and hopefully this is actually correct but if I use my keyboard I can actually control the motor So it is working. I'm pretty sure on the reason why I can't get that detection is because on some of the 4.10 VESC which I have on this board right now, there's a capacitor which is only um, a 2.2 capacitor and they should be upgraded to a 4.7. This is fixed in 4.12 version VESC but I don't have one at the moment. Um, so you, you probably can't use uh, fog and you'll know because when you try to measure this it will flash your VESC slight a couple of times um, it's giving you a DRV fault my wife is putting my baby to bed and my other baby is crying so I'm going to leave you at the moment and then we'll continue with that configuration okay guys so I'd like you to meet my daughter Lexi she is beautiful and three weeks old so she's brand new member to the electric skateboard community but um, to finish off with this video we're going to do application for configuration for people um, this value 
um, he, there's not many fields and this is probably the least complicated part of BLDC tool and programming the BISC. Um, starting off we have controller ID right here. This, if you have two VESC or more, you can connect them via CAN bus. Um, basically, your CAN bus port on your VESC is the four pin port. Uh, sorry, just right there. Right there. And you use the two middle pins. And basically, you connect them up to each other parallel so each pin's lining, like the same pin's lining up to the one on the other side. But when you have two connected up to each other, it's good to number them so then you know. Um, if they're both zero, if you only have two, it doesn't really matter. But if I set this one to one and then did write data, then I could come over here and this is can forwarding. So what this means is if I set this to a one as well and then clicked can forward then it's going to tear detect the VESC um, VESC firmware so I've got one as the controller number there so it's detecting me um, and that means that I'm connected to this VESC number if I had a second one and it was zero let's say that zero is master and I click that, or sorry, I click can forwarding. It says no firmware read response. If I untick it, it reconnects to the one that's um, connected via USB. Basically, all that this is for is if you don't want to unplug your USB port plugged into the other one, or you have a, a new wireless bridge system or going through Bluetooth, you don't have to worry about disconnecting and connecting to the other VESC you can um, forward it's forwarding the port though so at the moment you're not if you're writing motor configurations for one motor you click write and you have this um, selected here as one for your second one then it's not going to send those that data automatically to both VESC lots of people are in the um, understanding that that's the case it's not so definitely don't think that um, and then blow up one of your motors or one of your VESC um, soon I'm trying to make it so you have another tick box right here that says write forward which will write only motor configuration because you don't want the application configurations to be the same just in case you have a nunchuck plugged into one and a different controller plugged into the other one or a Bluetooth module who knows what you could be doing but I don't I wouldn't recommend having application configuration forwarded um, generally if you have a two vest set up and you just have PPM like a PWM signal like your receiver on a FlySky controller you wouldn't even worry about the second vest setting it all that you would do is this here set your ID and then click send status over CAN, which means that the, the VESC um, information like the amps and the RPM, things like that, are all going to be sent to the first master VESC. Um, and there's a rate here, don't change that. Um, there's timeout settings, so if your VESC has had no um, data from your nunchuck or PPM or whatever, you, source you're using for 100 milliseconds then it will apply this amount of break I would say leave it at zero you don't want to be writing loose connection and then bang you come off your board if you have that at break um, if you have breaking amps there so just leave it um, these are the applications that we have we have UART which is default nunchuck which you would set if you have the Nyko Karma. Um, or if you have been using Arduino with Rolling Gecko's code. PPM is a PWM signal like FlySky remote or an, an inertia remote or um, DOI skateboard remote. 
PPM and UART just means that you can use UART so you could have um, Bluetooth module plugged in as well as your um, remote. NRF is a 2.4 gigahertz um, NRF24 LO1 plus chip. Now this chip um, can come in lots of different forms. If you're using the Nunchuck custom board then that's what you'll be using um, to plug it in. You don't have to do Nunchuck, use NRF and then you still use the Nunchuck tab to um, set configurations. But this here is a cheap chip they don't work very well. This one here is from SparkFun and has a genuine chip on it and I've put a really big 5 decibel antenna on it um, which I would use to make sure I don't get any, have any dropouts. But the um, she's fun The application that we're going to go with right now is PPM because most people use that and um, we're just going to write a configuration here. We're going to go to the PPM tab. Oh, remember after you write a configuration you have to reboot your VESC to make sure that's actually written and working. Going to wait for the VESC to be ready to connect. Okay, read configuration again just to make sure. Okay, we go to the PPM tab. You've got your options here. So disabled means that there's no, um, that setting is not communicating with the VESC. If I want to use my keypad to control, then I have to have this disabled, otherwise there'll be interference. If I'm going to do motor detection, set it as disabled so there's no interference. Um, duty cycle, don't worry about. Um, duty cycle, no reverse, don't worry about unless you're advanced. Current mode means basically that it's sending current to your board, um, to your motors to drive it. Um, that's the big thing about the VESC. It uses means to know how much current needs to be applied to have the motor spinning um, rather than other motors that use a timing um, schedule and things like that to send current two phases and line it all up but um, I won't go into that fully. And we've got current with no reverse so if you pick that one or if you pick this one and you have a fly sky remote you will have reverse and that can be quite annoying and tricky. Um, I would recommend doing current with no reverse with brake so current no reverse won't give you brake current no reverse with brake will give you no reverse but the pulling trigger back will give you a brake pit control these are all things that I wouldn't worry about um, it's basically like if you set that then this pit max RPM that you set that's the speed that the motor is going to go at things like that duty cycle I'd not 100% familiar with it. I'm not going to pretend to know about it and I'm not going to tell you about it. Um, right here, don't worry about PID um, ERPM there. Dead band, I wouldn't worry about setting either. That's basically the percentage of your joystick that is dead. It's not going to do anything. Um, and it makes it a little less sensitive. Minimum pulse width. So you got your minimum and your maximum. For the PWM signal, um, that's basically full trigger will be in your two value. At a um, full break, it's this one value. Now, you can actually decode this by clicking display and it comes up with this bar. I don't have anything plugged in, but if I go full trigger, it will say right here the value and you can match these up so if I'm going full acceleration change this value to be the same as that if I go full brake change that value to be the same as that and then write it and it will make sure that you um, 
then have your full trigger um, length rather than it being really responsive um, when you first use it and you don't get much break or it's like a throttle trim on your remote. Um, if you do use a FlySky remote or something I would be setting my throttle trim to zero and then adjusting these settings in here. We've got your medium um, use medium filter. I I'm not actually 100% sure, use a medium filter to reject noise, this will introduce some sample delay. So basically it's trying to reduce noise in your PWM signal. Um, safe start, don't give throttle unless the receiver output has been zero, at least 50 pulses. Um, basically that's just a safety um, feature so then you don't get kicked off your board. Soft RPM limits. Most people don't actually use this but I think it's good. Um, I particularly don't want to go over um, like 35 kilometers an hour on my board but some people do. They like to go 45 and things like that. If your board's set out for it go ahead go that fast but I would actually work out um, if my normal voltage it's like 3.7. I'd work out what RPM my motors will be spinning or electrical RPM my motors will be spinning at that 3.7 times say 10 for a 10 cell battery and then actually re set this to be that value. The start value is um, that amount and then this one is an end, so it's the soft one, soft limiting like we were talking about before, which means that it will start to back off at this value and then completely back off at this value. The reason why I would recommend actually setting them is because um, it just gives you a consistency of your speed and it makes you familiar with the speed, the speed that your board will generally go and then if you're in a situation where your battery's going dead and you don't have the speed and you need it then you aren't going to expect it because you've set the limit to be at one of the lowest RPMs that you, I'm um, sorry, the um, lowest speed that your motors will spin at a low charge. So I think it's a little bit of a safety feature but you can do calculations and then limit it to 20 kilometers an hour, things like this. In the motor configuration tab I said not to really worry about these ones, it does the same thing except this one has your soft limits which I said before. So it's not going to halt at that speed and maybe kick you off if you're going down a hill um, because this isn't just for acceleration, it's for going down hills and things like that too. Um, multi ESC over CAN. This is important if you have two VESC. It is important to have this send status over CAN ticked as well. Um, if you have this multi ESC over CAN enabled, then the second VESC, well, the masker VESC, will read values from the slave VESC and then they'll basically or send signals to it for acceleration and things like that so they're working with each other. It's a lot better than splitting your servo cable um, because doing that causes problems with your pulse width modulation. Um, and then you've got your enabled traction control. This is basically it's going to read RPM for both speed controllers and then it will have a difference. This is actually good to have a difference when you're turning corners, um, things like that. So if you set this, then it'll allow your motors to not be absolutely in sync and you can set the difference right here. Um, and yeah, if you set the difference, then it's going to um, make sure that it doesn't go any different than 3000 as well. So um, just in case one motor gets clunked, um, cogged up with a rock or something, who knows, one might be spinning and the other one's standing still, your VESC might actually kick in and say, oh wait, let's back off. Um, okay, so that's your 
um, control for your remote. So if you're using a inertia remote like this, that's what you're going to be using, um, pulse width modulation. The ADC tab right here, you can set ADC there and ADC with UART. Um, that's um, basically a DC value that you're going to have imported into the VESC and you can then control your VESC from a wired connection. Um, so if say I had a e-bike and I wanted to use this or I had a pressure sensor on my board um, to change the resistance between uh, your voltage then you can set here basically minimum voltage you can set that to say 90 and then if it's a 3 volt power supply um, yeah, power source then you set it for 3 so the more resistance that's given that's your acceleration um, and you can change your braking and things like that using this you can have two um, buttons that actually gives you control so you can have a brake, you can have a reverse button, you can have a cruise control button um, to actually give you um, more options so you could have a few things wired in you wire this onto the TX and the RX pin and the ADC pin on your UART um, port of your vest so the same one that the Nuka Khan is plugged into you can also use your servo inputs um, to then be able to connect into um, cruise controls and things like that um, and you can set all this up for an e-bike or a pressure sensor I haven't actually messed with this so um, I'm not going to go into it any further basically you've got the same thing as current no reverse button um, current no reverse ADC2 so you can have two ADC values that could be changing braking, duty cycle and things like that as well your soft RPM limits again and your multi um, ESCs over CAN bus and then you can display the pulse width well it's not pulse width on this one it's actually voltage and then you can um, tailor it really to be right your UART tab just changes your board rate and that's basically speed of data transfer things like that um, don't really need it unless you're using Bluetooth or if you're using Roland Gecko's remote um, he's going to use 9600 but that's fine um, then you've got your nunchuck tab you've only I like it you've got less buttons here you've got current with reverse Z button makes it reversed and then you can swap it back or current I go current because I don't like the reverse function on my boosted board I use it but on this I just think I can accidentally press that button too easily. Same thing, you've got a dead band. You've got e RPM limits again. They're just in different positions in this tab. Um, and then you have positive ramping time constant. What's that, people might ask? Basically, it's the amount of time that it takes to get from your... Yeah, there's a calculation that it uses so the max amount of amps that you've set in your motor configuration tab here and the minimum amount of amps which is also set somewhere in the configurations which I'm not going to go through um, and then where the current amps are that's going into the the VESC and what will happen is if you set this ramping time constant to 9 think it's in seconds so it'll take nine seconds to get from zero um, or three amps if that's your minimum to um, your full amp rating so people need to remember though that um, if there's no load it's still going to spin up fast like you'll see a little bit of a time delay but not a huge amount if you have it set um, and you're actually using the board and say your average amp drawer is 10 amps then it's 9 seconds to the peak amount of amps so it's 
um, say the peak amount of amps is um, say 100 amps and this is set to 10 seconds um, it's going to take one second to get to that 10 amps so um, the I'm pretty sure that's how it works anyway so um, you might not feel like it's doing much but um, it really does make a difference anyway the negative ramping time constant is for braking or when you're using cruise control when you're going down a hill and things like that um, it'll actually limit your speed going down the hill to be the same RPM that you were using before um, so it's automatically braking and it's going to negatively ramp that braking um, if you also remove your finger off the trigger it will ramp down so it's not going to instantly drop back speed um, really I don't like using this because if you freak out and push your brake it might not happen straight away and it can get quite confusing because you think oh it's not working I'll try a bit harder then you've got ERPM input for cruise control your um, this is the input for, uh, for cruise control um, I think this is it doesn't say minimum or positive if we hover over it it might give us some information which it doesn't but yeah it's um, I'm not going to go into it because I'm not really sure but leave it default multi ESC over can same thing display same thing C button for cruise control Z button for change direction um, NRF tab, don't mess with this stuff unless you know what you're doing. This is just for the custom nunchuck PCB. Basically, you've got a channel that it's running through, and then you've got an address. Av like normally, it's set to zero. Um, if you set it to one or two, then it's going to change. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be messing with this. But that's pretty much all that I'm going to go through in this. Um, video you've got your real-time data page here you can do temperature or RPM or you can do your current and duty cycle um, and you've got your activate sampling back EMF plot I'm not 100% how to use this and you got your current plotting this is to do your square wave or your sine wave depending whether you're using FOC or BLDC you got a terminal here, your firmware, which we've gone through, rotor position. Don't use this unless you're using encoder, otherwise it will do some funky stuff with your motor. You've got an experiment tab where you can input your own servo input and then you can put samples and things like that, sample files and try to get um, make your own custom applications and things like that. In terminal there's some good stuff that you can actually do if you type in help here it's going to list everything that you can so you can um, ping you can stop the motors last ADC value and the one that I really want to show for people is your fault so if you type in fault it'll print out the faults for the VESC um, if you go faults, prints all stored fault codes and con continuous when they arrived. Um, oh, conditions when they arrived. So that's actually going to give you a really good data. At the moment, the DRV chip um, that they're using, Vetters is planning to upgrade and have three shunts. It's going to give a lot more information about. Um, DRV faults and things like that and actually why we're getting them which will be good but um, you can print out voltage things like that you can spin motors up all of those things um, the one that I want to show is KV so if I type in KV and I get my motor not touching I can actually uh, KV I 
could do a KV test, but let's see why we can't. So we're going to go read configuration and application configuration. We're going to read that again, and we're in PPM disabled. Let's go no application, write configuration because, as I said, there's interference and we don't want interference. And we're going to reboot. and then we're going to connect again. So we've got the terminal tab right here. And let's try it again. We're going to go KV. Actually, it might have been as simple as it needs to be capital KV. And then I'm going to move my motor, press send again. I'm not getting anything. I'm not sure particularly why. Let's see if I've got, I don't have, if I use my direction keys, I'm not actually controlling the motor. So that means there's a reason there's interference somewhere. So if I go back to my application tab and I go read configuration, send status over can, that's the one. If you have that there ticked, we're going to write that again. You can't, it's expecting, um, information from another VESC and things like that so you can't do control of your motor so I'm using my keyboard at the moment to control my my VESC um, basically your left key will go forward um, or backwards for your right um, or depending what your phase wire configuration is it could be opposite but it will do at a set RPM um, if you go up and down it'll do it at a higher RPM and it will use amps I'm pretty sure but it's basically just changing the amount um, of current going into the motors um, you can also control them using this so if I set this to 3000 RPM and then I hit RPM it's gonna spin at 3000 RPM you do the same for current, so if I wanted 3 amps through it, it's going to spin at full speed with 3 amps, and then I can go release motor. But, terminal, let's get back on track. KV. Send. Let's try shift KV. Send. Still nothing. did this the other day, it was really cool. Anyway, if you use this KV, oh wait, oops, it was doing it. Because I've actually spun my motors before, it didn't spin up the motor. Um, because it already knew information. So it's saying it's 887.41 RPM per volt. Now it's electrical RPM, so let's grab the calculator, guys, so then you can see it. So let's go 887. 41, let's say it's a 12 pole motor, we'll divide it, I mean sorry, 14 pole motor, we're going to divide it by 7, equals 126 kV, if it was a four, uh, 28 pole motor, we could divide this by 14, and it would be a 63 kV motor, hub motor. But the cool thing is that you can read your kV of your motor and actually check whether it's the same as what the factory has told you it is. Okay guys, so I've gone through basically everything there is to do with BLDC tool and programming your VESC. Um, 
So I'll be around in the community. Anyone send me an email, send me um, any sort of question in the forums. Um, send me donations if you want um, for some of the development that I'm doing because it is costing me money. But um, yeah, um, just keep supporting Benjamin Vetter mostly because he does most of the good work and send him donations more importantly because he definitely has to pay money to have sample uh, PCBs and things like that uh, made up. So the more money that he can get in, the more he can actually um, develop, which we really want. His big time constraint, um, his big problem is time constraints. So um, if we could uh, pay his wage, couple of hundred grand a year maybe then he might retire and then just full-time VESC work but I doubt that's gonna happen it would be nice though I don't think anyone cares about electric skateboards that much to donate him that much money but thank you very much for watching um, and have a good day